Yeah, now this is more like it. Yeah, off the beaten path. I think I'll name one of my photography, um, my photography uh, art, artistic photography. I think I'll name a section of that in my in my website. I think I'll name it that. One of them, off the beaten path or something like that. Yeah, this is my style. I don't care where I end up. I don't care where I come from or where I end up. I'm just going to go. You see the blue sky, don't you? I know you're excited. Man, I am too, but I'm excited every time I go someplace. <laughs> Oops, I'm about to slip and fall. <laughs> oh man, what's over here? There better not be any garbage. Don't be PO'd because I'll have to pick that stuff up. Yeah. You know that. You know you're going to be seeing them today. All of them. Yeah. But you will find me. I know you will. Yeah. Uh-oh. I need, I need football cleats to climb up here. <laughs> I do. I need the... I need the, the rubber types, the plastic types you buy from, you know, Dick Sporting Goods or something. Holla. Man. Perfect. I'm giving you guys a chance to play the game. But you have to play it on your own time. You do. Because you will see them. You will. Yeah. But I want to find some cool things today. I do. Ooh, look in the leaves. I bet they're looking right at you. They're going to recreate themselves by using nature. I told you that already. Today's a good day to come out and find them. But I'm going to... I'm going to let it rest for a while. I made a pact with God the other day. I did. I did. What was the pact that I made with him? The one who makes me exercise my cube. It's like a honing device is what it is. You have to have the gift. Flower of life in the Metatron cube to see them. You don't have to. In a way. But I can teach you how to get it. How to grasp it. How to get it. That's why I invented the Da Vinci lens. Or let's just say... You can call it an app if you want for your iPhone and pull out that Da Vinci lens with your DSLR cameras, whatever it may be. But that's cool. That's up to you. You're probably not understanding what I'm talking about. You're not. Man. Uh, sometimes the deer, they pave the way for you to go. They do. And sometimes I don't. I don't mind following the deer tracks, it's just, you know, I don't want to follow in anybody's footsteps. I like creating my own footsteps, if you know what I mean. Leaving my own kind of mark. Yo, man, I thought you were trying to get to the creek the quickest way possible. But I want to explore it too in the same, in the same route, you know? I do. <laughs> it's awesome just to get out it is one good thing about this when I come out this time of year anywhere in the state of Georgia no matter where it is it could be anywhere in the country anywhere around the world if I ever get the money to travel <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute but one of my main goals when I come out and explore is to do what guys what is it I know not just to find history and all sorts of other stuff not to find dead bodies nothing Ooh. There's a piece I'm going to match up with my Flower of Life pedal. I'm going to take a reference shot. So I can uh, verify it later. But to come out like this is a blessing it is. It always will be. For me at least. I don't know about you. But what did I tell you what I'm always looking for? When I come out deep in the woods, no matter where I'm going. What did I tell you? No, not just Native American graves, not, not grave sites, not just gold and diamonds. 
What else did I tell you I was looking for? What do you always see me do when I come up to something very significant? But what do I always look for also? The largest trees in the forest. I'm always hunting for the largest trees in the forest. It's always been one of my hobbies. Ever since I was a child, I've always been going out. If I don't find one thing that I'm looking for, I'm definitely going to find something else. Yeah. So I'm also looking for the largest trees in the forest. So I can touch it. So I can talk to it. To find out a secret. A secret of life. Which, you know, is something that somebody already knows about. I'm trying to figure out a different way to go. We're having a great time though. Blue sky is coming up. The sun's about to expose many things to us today. If I can find my way to that creek. <laughs> yeah. Like I told you before that the essence of the large trees can teach you a lot about life itself. In many ways, the detail that I try to follow sometimes. A metaphor for life, of course. Metaphor for life. Perfect. Like I said, I need some football cleats out here. The ankle highs that I used to wear when I was playing baseball, when I was playing center field, because it gave me better ankle support when I tracked down those fly balls. Anything good in here? Yeah, you know I'm always looking. Yeah, you know I'm going to finish that code. It's not just a code, it's much more than that. All right. <laughs> Tell me if you see a creek in the horizon. <laughs> it's probably over there somewhere. Yeah. We got plenty of time to get lost and get found again. We do. It smells good out here. Aha, bingo, perfect timing. beautiful piece of art right here yeah sun just popped out let's go see if we can find something in this big old down tree right here that was taken down for a reason aha I see water yeah I see water down there that's good but this is not good but this always happens this always happens for a reason because everything is a drawing in nature. Everything is always a drawing in nature. A perfect drawing. Oh, I see a piece I want to take a look at. Yeah, no arrowheads in there yet. I want to get my hands dirty today, guys. I do. But I don't want to destroy anything in the process. You didn't know that about me. That's why I love living around people in apartment complexes. That's why I lived in areas, in neighborhoods and places where, uh, man, in neighborhoods where uh, that's like a painting. Dang. Uh, just a reference picture, dang. Well, that's why I love living with some other people. I never had a place of my own. I, I did once. I did once for three years in an apartment complex. 
But I love living in apartment complexes around other people. Because I, in a sense, I did love people. I did. But there was another reason why I love doing that. Why is that? Yeah, you don't know. I know. Because I couldn't bring it to myself. I love cleaning. I do. I love yard work. But I do not like taking down nature. That's one reason I avoided living in a house or something where it had me be the person who would have to take down nature and cut it down because I knew deep down inside that they were designed for a reason. Everything was built and created for a reason. Where's that piece I saw? Oh yeah, I think that might have been it. I don't know, I'm at a different perspective. It looked nice and flowing like the waters of eternity. That could have been it. Yeah. I know how boring for you, viewers. <laughs> Not boring for me. Yeah. But I just never could live in a house. There were many years I could afford to buy my own house, somewhere deep out in the country someplace. But I couldn't bring myself to destroy nature, cut it down, cut down the trees in your yard, cut down the bushes. I know I sound weird, I know I do. Because I'm always going to be weird, you know that. But I just couldn't do it. I did it many times when I was younger. I did, but I learned my lesson. Cutting down trees just because But I could do it no more. I didn't have to ask them, you know. When I cut their branches, I learned later, when I was in my early teens. Is it okay if I trim your branches? Is that all right with you? And I felt bad, I did. I know you're laughing, you're laughing. You, this guy's Looney Tunes. <laughs> no, you don't know the truth. You don't know. It's okay if you rake up the leaves, but you have to do a different kind of landscaping. If you're in your own house, do yourself a favor. Pick plants, foliage, different kind of species and all, wisely. You'll understand what I mean later. Let's hope I chose the right creek. I don't even know if this is the right one. Well, yippee, everybody. We made it in the waters of eternity. We did. It's gorgeous out here. And the sun decided to make an appearance. Man, look at that. Perfect. But I'll tell you what, if I was still in school, if I was still in school, guys, today would be my very first day of Christmas break. Well, I think yesterday would have been. Because yesterday was Saturday. Yeah. Yesterday would have been the very first day of my Christmas break for university. But last year, my thesis year, I spent the entire Christmas break doing my thesis stuff. And I probably went out just three days the entire month. I'm so glad I'm done with that. I am. Oh, man. But I want to tell you what about this pact that I made with God. The one who always makes me come out to find them. To exercise my Metatron Q to make sure I never lose it. The other one makes me exercise my flower of life. That's the other one. Yeah. 
course I love them dearly. They've always been a part of my life, but I want to tell you why I had to make a pact with them. Why? Because I taught you how to play their game. To help come find them. Either they're on face. By recognize, by recognizing who you've recognized or will always recognize in your life. I'm looking. Because you know we're going to find some stuff today. You can tell because there's no leaves on top of the the rock bed, the gravel bars. Get off of there. But I'll tell you something though. When it came to this pact of mine, what kind of pact was it? Something that was so important to you. And also to the one who makes me come out and find them. Why? I'll tell you why. Because I'm taking too much of what you were also meant to find to be a part of their game. So I told them, I'll just take a few and let you find the rest. Because I was doing a bad thing. But I was taking too many. I was. So now I have to take half of them back out. That's something you'll never be able to do without once you find them for the first time. And it'll become an addiction. It'll be a worldwide event. It'll be a different kind of holiday. Oops. I thought that was a point. Yes, I have garbage in my left hand. Of course I do. But I'm not saying some kind of worldwide event where, you know, you just go out one day a year. You can if you want to. But choose wisely. It could be one of your hobbies if you're able to get out. But for the ones who are not able to get out, you should help them. But what about the ones who can't see? What about the ones who can't see? Perfect. Thank you, God. But I know you're asking the question, what if, what about the ones who can't see? What about them? That's why there's triangles. So they can touch them. So they can feel them. Feel who God is in a different way. You help them find the triangles. And you let them pick it up. I'm moving slow as a snail. <laughs> Let's keep going. It's gorgeous out here. It's like 71 out here. Perfect. I haven't found anything yet. But I've only gone like 200 feet. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter if we find anything. I mean, we're going to find a lot of stuff. Trust me on that. We are. There they go. Yep. Man. Perfect white quartz right here. Let's see what it has to offer. Is it a piece? No, it's not. Oh, wow. Well, look at this. All right. All right, you guys think I should keep this or leave it for you? For you to find. I have enough as it is for the meantime. It's your turn now. 
Yeah. How am I going to fit this in my pocket? I don't know, guys. I don't. I don't know how I'm going to get that big old piece in my pocket. It's bigger than my pockets itself. Well, I thought that was a point, but it's not. Dang. Oh well. No luck yet. But we're going to find something. We will. You got to keep that positive attitude. But you know what I mean by find, find something. Yeah, not just airheads and all. Everything possible. But I want at least one airhead today. I do. Well, I had to put that big old bag in a smaller bag right here. Yeah, I took out uh, some of my old uh, grocery bags out here so I can collect the garbage. Not everything, just uh, just what I can, you know, so I can step up a little bit. Let's see what this is. Oh, perfect smoky, not smoky, but perfect uh, bubble wrap quartz. Melted bubble wrap. Yeah, perfect. But I'll tell you what. But I'll tell you, whoa. I wonder where that's coming from. That's cool. I wish I could find some gold out here. <laughs> yeah, have a good time with it, you know. Just collect it, build that little foundation. Holler at me if you see something. Oh, what's that? Oh, I thought that was like a like a knife or something, but it's not. Dang. Sometimes perspective is uh is a game that you won't understand until you actually experience it in a different way. Is that one? Oh please be one. Oh, is that one? I don't know. Could that be? There's no signs of napping. It looks native to the uh, to the area of geology out here. It's rounded off. I don't think that's one. I don't. That can't be. I find these all the time. It's too rounded off. Nah, I'll just keep it. I'll study it later. See, this looks more like one, but it's not. <laughs> I'll keep this in my fake pile. That's pretty cool right there. Yeah, there's white quartz all over the place out here. I think I got one. I think I have one. I bet that's a point. Oh my, yeah, it is. All right. We found our first one of the day. We did. Look at that. Look at that. Probably, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Every time I look, I never know the date. I'm not an expert. I am in a different way, I guess. Look at that. Perfect. Got our first one. All right. Haven't found a point in about three weeks. And I'm not talking about out here. I'm talking about all over the place because I haven't really been looking. I haven't. Uh, don't want to forget our garbage in my, my water. Look at that. What's the date on this? I know there's a born on date on it, like I got Bud Light out here or something. Budweiser. I think I'll put that in my right. Yeah, all right. Now we're getting on a roll here. We found a bunch of crazy stuff back there. And we found our first point. Man. Yeah, but all that stuff that you could never do without. I guess that, I don't know what that is. A bunch of this little white quartz around here. Wait a minute, yeah. Oh crap. I bet we have another one. Look at that. Holy crap. Look at that. Look at that. That's an ancient one. I've seen these before. This is my second one I found, probably 11,000 years old. Early archaic. I found one just like this about six months ago. Look at the working on it. Good napping. 
Found another one, people. So enough. Crap. It's a fat one, too. Thank you, Lord. We're hitting it right today, and it's only 12.45. I see some nice, perfect white quartz. I don't know if it's going to stick to us when I pull it out. And I can't put this in the water. It'll float away. I think I see one. I think I see something very special besides this. And besides that. And besides that. And besides this. And besides that. I see something else that's going to capture your interest. You already see it. Watch it float away. Watch this. I can't see it. It's like fishing. I see two of them. Oh, no. That's... I thought that was a triangle. My bad, people. I think we have another one. Holy crap. I don't know if that can be considered a preform or a bootleg point that's like 30,000 years old. Look at that. I think I'll go with the latter. Crap. We're having one incredible day, I'll tell you what. They even did the bottom just right. Man. Add it to the pocket. There's another piece. I don't know if that's going to be anything or not. Let's get it before the current pulls it off. Chip off the old block. I'm keeping that. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Looks better when it's wet. I can't get it. Ah, dang. I thought that was a point. I'll tell you what, though. I don't... It doesn't matter if it's 25 degrees out here. I'm still coming out when the sun is out. <laughs> Why my water get carried away? I'll have to chase it down. I almost fell over. But see that, <laughs> I'll do anything to keep the garbage out of here. I will. <laughs> I'll do anything to keep that garbage out of nature. I will. To the best of my abilities. I know I'm not perfect at it. I know I'm not. <laughs> Let's hope I didn't lose anything out of this bag of garbage of mine. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> the garbage of your time. The things you can't live without. Yeah. The stuff that litters the landscape. I tell you what though. If you're a designer like me, an inventor like me, an innovator like me, I guarantee you, if you're going to do something with your garbage, why don't you create something? Instead of just throwing it out in nature, why don't you create something with it? You're moving towards that direction. I know you are. But why don't you create something very special out in nature that's not really seen as garbage, but as a masterpiece, just like what you're looking at. It's a perfect scene right there. Just in another cool spot right here. And I just found another one. It's in my right hand. I'm going to get this crap out of here. Put this in my little bag right here. Lucky. Luckily, I have uh, have two garbage bags with me today. Most of the time, you know, Da Vinci, I forget how to to bring my bags out with me. But I found one already. It was under the water. But it's a little broken. It's a little broken. Right here. That edge is missing. But yeah, just like the other ones. Tiny little one. Probably about a few thousand years old. Yeah. But it's broken. It's got that broken edge right there. Dang good day today. Recollecting that history. I don't know how I saw it. It mixes in with everything else quite nicely. I guess it's those eyes of mine. There's another big old chip off the old block right there. How many are we going to find today, people? 
we might find just what we just found. That's it. Just those two or three. Maybe it was four that we just found. But what if we find more? Let me put this stuff down so we can get together. Yeah. Of course. You know me and my geometry. Perfect. You better believe I'm keeping that. What I always strive for. Man, look at that. Molded by the waters of eternity. But I want to talk to you about something pretty serious. But I want to talk to you about something like giving up in a different way. Doing without stuff to clear your mind, clear your soul. On how everything you own isn't everything in life. It's not. It's the experience of life that's important. Not the things that you have. Not your desires. Your material, materialistic things that you have. I stuttered because I thought I saw something. But it's nothing. Yeah. But you don't understand what I'm talking about when I talk about giving up some certain things. You can always have a life, have a family. You can but every now and then you have to try to let go of some things, you know. Let go of the bills, let go of the uh, things that you have. Unless it's very important to you in a different way. Like family heirlooms, the little trinkets that you find, the cinnamon things of time. But when it comes to unloading things. In your life to help just retrieve your soul back in a different way. And clear your soul a different way. There are steps that you have to take to get there. What's that fable? That fable, that story. That world famous story about the Mexicans who lived down in, I don't know, Tijuana or something. I don't know where they were from. That fable about the Mexican guys, the family. That were poor, but they lived out in paradise. And then you had a rich guy who worked his life away to try to become rich and famous. And his dream was to live in paradise for the rest of his retirement, the rest of his years. And then he makes it there and then ends up in the same position they were. Experiencing the same exact thing. I know I used to. I used to burn my life away when I was younger. I did. Trying to fight for that money. Trying to fight for that, you know, the desires of life. The nice fancy car, the nice fancy apartment. But you know, there's a sense of emptiness that comes with that. There is. A sense of problematic things around you, if you think about it. What I'll tell you about the concept of experiencing the things around you that you've collected over the years. The widescreen TVs, the bills that are stacking up, the computers, the iPads, everything that keeps you away from this in a different way. Like I said, step back and look at a bigger picture. Look around your surroundings in your house. Go in your garage. Go in your bathroom. Go in your kitchen. Go everywhere possible around your house. Deep down inside, there's a part of your soul. There's a side of your soul that feels very overwhelmed. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The clutter. Even if it's clean. There's clutter within your soul, your mind. I'm not talking about getting rid of everything. Don't get rid of the memories of life. Get rid of the other stuff. And you'll feel how free you really are. You'll feel the true sense of freedom. You will. There's nothing like the feeling of freedom. A different kind of freedom. 
that releases the feeling of one and desire from your soul. It resets something within you, a different kind of way. Like being born again, right? If you think about it, yes. But I know you're not going to want to give up your Wi-Fi, give up your big screen TVs, your fancy cars. It's called recycling in a different way. A different kind of recycling. Where someone else comes along and they buy it. Because they're ready for that round. Bingo! Bingo, bingo, bingo! Oh, crap. All right. This one's yellow quartz. Crap a lot. <laughs> yes, baby. What's that? Number four? For today? Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. I just took a shot in the dark at pulling something out. Because anything out here could be anything. Where'd I get that thing at? Right there? I don't know. I think it was right there. I know I get excited. I think I just saw that edge and that's what excited me. There's a bunch of edges out here. You know Da Vinci gets carried away when he sees that kind of stuff. Because it's history. I know you get excited too, don't you? Maybe you don't. Maybe it's not an enjoyment of yours. It's not what you desire. You desire something much more complicated something much more expensive something that you don't want to take your hands off of but you're always due for a cycle aren't you a cycle of your own life how you should let go of things that are a different kind of desire You can always go back when the time comes, you know. You can always go back when the time comes. When you're ready to come back, right? Am I talking about reincarnation? Not this go around. I'm talking about, you know, the essence of your own life. When you're ready to go back for the things of your desires. The things that you've always had in the past but you never let go of. It's perfect out here. Just like this perfect chip off the old block. Uh, keeping that bad boy. Look how smooth that is. That would go good in that fish tank. It's almost as if I don't have to clean it. <laughs> That's perfect right there. Yeah. But you can always go back to reinvest in the things of your technological world the things that brought you joy but you have to reset yourself if you know what I mean you do but also there's a trick behind that there's a reason why that's got to be done and the vision is going to tell you why like I told you there's nothing like having nothing for a little time I told you, every 10 to 12 years, I get rid of everything. Why do I do that? So I can rebuild my soul? You better believe that's one of the reasons. But there's another reason why it's going to blow your mind when I tell you this. There's another specific reason. There's many reasons. But there's three very specific reasons. Look at that. You want to know what their other reason is? Sit back and think about getting rid of what you can. Think like Da Vinci for a change and think about this. In a way, when you have nothing, you have everything. How did I walk over this? Maybe I was looking at the beauty in front of me. The seduction of nature. Yeah, but I believe I'm keeping that artifact of time.
in a way, yeah. What's so important about this concept of mine? When you have nothing, you have everything. Think about it. Look at the world around you when you do this. You can always have money to rebuild what you got rid of. Keep it for about 10 or 12 years, get rid of it again. Rebuild that foundation. But it helps keep the foundation of your own soul, right? You don't understand that, I know you don't. Look at how perfect this world can be, people. Look at how perfect it could be. Look how perfect it is. But don't wipe it out, please don't. Do it for yourself, do it for them. Don't wipe this out. You wipe them out, there's not gonna be any heaven on earth for you to explore it. So you can come find them. Look at this thing. Masterpiece of nature. Perfect. Hope you like my little iPhone videos. <laughs> you guys are going to kill me when I show you this in about 10 minutes after I discuss what I need to discuss about releasing yourself for a while. So you can have everything when you have nothing. You find yourself in many different respects in life. In one way is to release yourself of your belongings, not everything. I know you're telling me looking at water, already dead. The current is really backed up over here behind me. Look at that, you know, their faces in there. I'm just taking a reference picture because the image is so perfect. Trying to get those leaves in there. But I know you don't you don't agree with me. You don't agree to the fact that if you have nothing, you have everything. Think about it. You have everything when you have nothing. Because it's the endless possibilities that are in front of you when you get rid of everything. The endless possibilities of what you can have later on. When your soul is rebuilt, you find new interest. You find new loves. And I'm not talking about the ladies. I'm talking about the love for the world. The compassion for the human race. When you have nothing, you can concentrate on other things that make you more whole within your soul and your own being. But there's one very special concept. Man, look at that. Definitely worthy of recording this. Perfect. Is this my ninth one in the past five minutes? You better believe you heard me right. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I think I'll just keep it as a, yeah, that's a broken one. Ninth one in the past probably 10 minutes. I'll show you in a minute. No, not nine. I think about five. You'll want to know why you never saw them because the current's too heavy. But my eyes are like eagle eyes. I'll show you what I found in a minute when I'm done talking. But this whole concept about having everything when you have nothing has very deep meaning for very few human beings, individuals. Even the homeless people don't understand this concept. When you have nothing, you have the world. The world in front of your eyes. The world is in your grasp. Might be a scraper. You heard me right. When you have everything in front of you, you have the freedom to clear your head. Combine ideas. What does that mean by combine ideas? You heard me right. If you have what you have now, look at it. When you go out to do different things, like go to the shopping mall to buy more clothes, to buy more toiletries, to buy more things, chip off the old block. I think I'll leave it, it's too big to fit in my pocket. When you go out shopping for everything, when you get your payday, when your payday comes around, you desire more and more and more. 
But wait a minute. You already have everything. You cloud your mind. You cloud everything in your life by buying more. So therefore, you have too much. And an idea of it all. So why is this so important? Perfect. I like that piece. I think I'll leave it for you to find later. One thing that always stuck with me in my lives was the fact that when you have nothing, you have everything. Meaning, that it leaves room for innovation and invention. Right? Bingo. That's nice. Probably 1955, 1960. Jadeite. Fire King Jadeite, maybe. But it's a little bit too aqua. Maybe it's not Jadeite. But you just heard what I just said. I hope you did. To the fact that when you come to this conclusion, you start inventing. To combine all your ideas of the things of your desires. Imagine designing and inventing like a shower curtain that can change into designs that you choose by the day that you desire that design. Anything. When you have nothing, you have everything. The world is yours in a way. A way that you can design your own world for the better. When you already have those things, there's no room for increase because you already have one of something. But when you have nothing, there's always room for an increase. The perfect breeding ground for invention and innovation, wouldn't you say? Of course. You know how many inventions come to mind the second I release myself of personal belongings that I just bought recently? within the past five or 10 years. Every single time I do it, I can invent a thousand things. Man, look at that, that's perfect. The sun's in the perfect perspective. It allows us to see things differently. But let me go ahead and uh, show you. What All right, well, here's the big reveal of what I found in the past 10 minutes or so. Yeah, you ready to see it? Like I told you, the currents were really strong, so I had to pull it out. I couldn't pull it out on camera. Bingo. Perfect. Yeah. Seems absolutely gorgeous. Look at that one. Perfect. Here's a thumb scraper right here. Nothing too big. And here's another one. I don't know if that's the bottom of a point or if that's the top of a broken one. I don't know. Maybe that is the point. I don't know. Sorry you didn't see that on camera. But the currents out here are really strong. But I bet you understand. Hope you understand. Look at that scene. Can't go wrong with heaven on earth, can you? As long as you don't wipe it out. Don't put some development. Oh, I thought that was a giant point. But I hope you take the heart about what I was talking about. You don't have to. You'll never give up probably 75% of what you own. You never will. It's not your nature. But it's always been in mine. 
you know, kind of reset yourself. Redo a lot of things. If you know what I mean. All right, check it out, guys. Look at this. Yeah, look. Awesome. That's the day we had yesterday. I'm at the office right now. I just wanted to show you what we found yesterday. You didn't see all of these. You just saw most of them. But yeah, look at these. They're beautiful. I mean, some are broken. But they're quite nice. Yeah, some of these are ancient as you know what. Like that one. I want to know the age of that one. But they're all pretty old. Yeah, good point right there. I mean, it's a little bit chunky. It is. I don't know about this one, though. That looks like... <laughs> one that they would use for training I guess I don't know but this stuff is wild I love this kind of stuff I do here's one that's worn down here's one that's broken man a couple of these are just broken yeah because this one right here is exactly like this one right here a little bit bigger here's the bottom of one right here here's the bottom of one right here too and here's the bottom of one right here too. Yeah, look at this one. Look at this preform. Maybe it was a gigantic spear tip or something. They napped the crap out of that one. Look at that. Yeah, I don't know if this is a preform or if that's just like a broken tip to a humongous staff or something. I want to say if it's part of a staff. <laughs> Let's say it's that Da Vinci style. Here's another preform right here. Yeah, lovely. So that was supposed to end up looking like this, most likely. Yeah, and here we got this nice little thumb scraper here. Look at that. That's crazy. Where they knocked off those three little sides right here. That's awesome. Yeah, but we had a good Sunday, didn't we? <laughs> you talk about Da Vinci style. <laughs> most of these are probably mid-archaic, I hope. If they're late woodland, we're in trouble. <laughs> That's not that old. I like it to be old. I do. But I hope you like these finds. I hope you do. Thanks for watching always.